So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to explain some fairly complex biochemistry and because I'm not a biochemist, I'm going to use some visuals just to show how important it is that certain cycles within your child's body are working well um, and how everything's all connected. So this is the folate wheel. This cycle produces all the cells in the body. So 40 to 70 percent of children with a diagnosis have a problem with this pink wheel, the way that the folate cycle is spinning. Right next to the folate wheel is the methylation cycle. And the easiest way to understand methylation is to know that when babies are conceived, they're not methylated. And they grow through the process of methylation. So this cycle shows 90% impairment in children with a diagnosis. Together, these two cycles work to create a battery in the brain. So this battery is called glutathione. In kids with autism, this battery is up to 80% depleted and is the rate limiting step to development. So essentially, your child's brain can only develop as far as glutathione can take it. Glutathione is depleted by things like lead, mercury, aluminum, cadmium, things like bisphenol A. This battery plays a crucial role in managing uh, brain chemicals within the brain. So neurotransmitters govern everything from language to social development to sensory processing uh, to cognitive function. So if these cycles aren't working smoothly, we're going to get disruptions in the balance in the brain. So what happens when there's not enough glutathione is you end up having way too much glutamate. Now glutamate is the most plentiful neurotransmitter in the brain, but it has to be strictly managed. When the brain has too much glutamate, it starts to get really excited. Glutathione should be able to help you manage that excitability, but if it can't, that excitability can get to a toxic point. It can actually get so high that it creates damage within the brain. So this is what we see for kids with autism. When glutamate's too high, uh, we all do this actually, we'll have spikes in glutamate during the day and we manage it through repetitive behaviors, right? You forget your passport or your wallet, uh, you're stressed out about something and you pace back and forth. This is a form of repetitive behavior that's aimed at managing glutamate in the brain. The problem with autism is that the glutamate is so high all the time that kids and adults get locked in this repetitive world. They're very fixated, they're very routine, they're very rigid, and they're very obsessive. So most of what we do with biomedical treatment is improving these cycles. It's important from a quality of life standpoint because having that much glutamate is uncomfortable. It also opens doors to social language and cognitive skills that may be locked down because the glutamate is too high. So the methylation cycle governs about 200 different things within the body. It takes synthetic folic acid or folate from the diet and it converts it into methylfolate. So essentially methylfolate is like gold for the brain. This methyl donor travels over here and it donates itself to 200 different enzymatic and biochemical reactions within the body. Most of them are essential for development. One of the most important ones I want to touch on is the way that the cell membrane functions. Cell membranes are really, really crucial to autism. We know that the, when the cell membranes are damaged, we see more autistic symptoms. When we can stop the damage to the cell membrane, those symptoms decrease. So your cell membrane governs a lot of your sensory processing, your articulation, your clarity, your cognitive skills, and your overall language. This is a communication center. Your cell membrane allows things in, and it gets rid of toxins. So we know that our kids have issues with their cell membrane. We know that many of them have problems within their mitochondria. This is the energy production factory in the body. Mitochondria create the currency that drives motor skills. So things like motor development, um, you know, fine and gross motor skills, but also things like eye contact and communication, because these are the finest fine motor skills that we have. These are governed by mitochondrial function. So if you don't have a folate cycle that's working well and you can't methylate properly, you don't have enough glutathione, you're gonna actually get damage to the cell membrane and you're gonna damage mitochondria. So most of the research in the medical aspects of autism have identified some problems with mitochondrial function. So if we can protect the mitochondria and start to heal the system, we're gonna see improvement in overall skills. The way that I think about this currency when it comes to your child's language skills are just like 
You know, it's like you paying your bills. You have to have enough money to pay your bills. You have to have enough energy to move the muscles and to fuel the synapses. So we know that our kids who have a diagnosis, often they have too many little synapses and they don't have enough fuel. It's a fueling problem. If we can improve the fueling overall, you know, we see overall gains in our kids. Now, I would definitely say in my 14 years of practice that the dietary intervention is the hardest for families. It seems surprising and even confusing to people that changing your child's diet could improve their development. So hopefully this will make sense. If 40 to 70% of children who have a diagnosis don't turn their pink wheel very effectively, they essentially can't take folic acid that's synthetic from things like grains and convert it into methylfolate, which we've just shown is essentially gold when it comes to development. So synthetic folic acid in the North American diet is around five milligrams a day, 5,000 micrograms. So that's fine if you can convert it, but if you can't, this cycle becomes clogged and it stops moving. The other ways that the folate cycle can slow down are through things like toxicity. Often we'll have families say, if my child's exposed to lead or mercury, do I have to put them on the diet? Well, yes, because these go hand in hand. Things like lead and mercury actually slow the cycle here. So it's even more important for a child who's been exposed to toxic metals to get the grains out of the diet. The faster the pink wheel turns, the faster the green wheel turns, the more glutathione, the better brain management we have glutamate. So the grain-free diet pulls out not just gluten, but corn and rice, anything that has synthetic folic acid that's been fortified into it. By putting kids on this diet, sometimes it's called paleo or GAPS diet or SCD, they all function to improve the folate cycle. When your folic acid isn't converting, it basically clogs the brain. So let's imagine that these are the folate receptors. The folate receptors preferentially bind synthetic folic acid, which means that this is totally clogged with crappy folate until we replace it with our golden methylfolate. This will only happen if your child is 100% grain free. The reason that we talk so much about the diet is that we estimate, based on the thousands of families that we've worked with, that this is 50% of your child's potential success. We see children's development dramatically improve. They feel better, they talk more, they learn faster. This cycle moving is a huge part of biomedical success. The other part that families find very difficult is using B12 injections. We're often working with really young kids, sometimes we're even working with toddlers and babies. B12 injections actually aren't about B12 at all. B12 status doesn't matter when it comes to improving methylation cycle. We use methyl B12. We use the methyl bound to B12 as a delivery system so that we can turn this green wheel faster. We know through research that if you inject with methyl B12, you'll improve how much glutathione there is in the brain. So these two cycles, when they're working properly, can boost your glutathione. Once your glutathione is higher, your child's developmental speed essentially speeds up, just like running on a treadmill. I think one of the biggest things that we see in our clinic is that, you know, parents are, you know, they're terrified that their kid's not gonna be okay. They may have, you know, not, thought they were gonna have a child on the spectrum, or maybe they had a child who was typical and then regressed. So parents are, they want an answer. They want something that can help their child be in less pain and have better digestion and sleep better and not hurt themselves and communicate more. Uh, and so they come to us and they ask, what can we do? And, and I always say to them, you know, we want big results, so we need to do big things. We're not gonna get big results if we don't do big treatments. So you, the diet is hard. It can be really hard, but once you are doing the diet, and your child's feeling better and communicating more and learning faster, I don't think there's anything easier than you cooking to get your kid better. I think when it comes to the diet, it's not just that the diet's difficult. It's not just that the B12 is difficult or it's hard to get supplements in for kids. I really think that families are terrified it's not gonna work. It, I think that sometimes the fear of hope is worse than the fear of failure. And so we say to families, listen, it, 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 it may not work, but it's probably going to if you look at the percentages. Uh, it's three months of your life to find out, right? Take the grains out, get the B12 injections in, get some of the right supplements that are based on testing. And usually in three months, kids are on their way to getting better. And recovery isn't about not being on the spectrum. Recovery is about your brain getting better and feeling better. The exciting thing about all of this 
mounting medical research with respect to brain inflammation and digestive dysfunction and mitochondrial impairment is that if it's medical, it's treatable. And if it's treatable, it's reversible. And so the sooner you start that process, the, the more function your child is going to have and the better they're going to feel.